Okay, I wanted to um, show a short video uh, and demonstrate one of the um, many benefits your Cardio Guru app um, has to offer um, and that will hopefully um, benefit um, many of you um, in obtaining your fitness goals through cardiovascular and HIIT training. We are the first app um, that I believe who have successfully um, been able to defeat the challenge of giving a training intensity zone that is uh, non-generic and is effective for the individual user. Um, there are different training intensity zones for different purposes. Um, what we must uh, always bear in mind is when we are uh, training um, cardiovascularly, um, whether that's anaerobically or aerobically, we must look at what um, uh, energy the body um, is electing okay, from a fuel source. Um, and we need to look at what the training intensity zone um, must be to match those two up in order to achieve the workout target. Um, if you fall short on one or the other, um, your workout will be ineffective. Um, example, if you want to um, predominantly burn fat or oxidize fat, um, from a workout session, um, you uh, mustn't um, have uh, high insulin levels. If you consume and digest sugar and carbohydrate before you train, um, you um, spike your insulin um, and it's physiologically impossible to oxidize a great majority of that workout from fat. Um, and if you spike it too much, you'll burn zero fat. Um, because the body will be running off the energy that is um, readily available and easily available, which is the carbohydrate and the sugar, uh, because you've spiked your insulin. Um, another example, um, if you are wanting to, um, to push yourself hard in an, in an aerobic capacity through endurance and stamina training, um, if your training intensity is too low, um, you, that will not be achieved. Um, so you always must look at what you're uh, uh, digesting and what training intensity um, you need to employ to get to the target. Um, we know that HIT high intensity interval training, for instance, um, which is a, a very effective uh, training protocol, um, but that's training uh, you anaerobically um, and that, that in most instances is best fueled from carbohydrate um, or, or any sugar that you've consumed because the body will rapidly use that um, and because you're training at such a high intensity it will burn that that, uh, that uh, as energy and, and you'll spike your EPOC and you'll continue to burn calories uh, which are predominantly from fat post-workout. However, you must have balance and structure to your cardio training. Um, not one single protocol um, is efficient. Um, you need to balance and mix and fuse many different training zones. Um, as an example, um, although HIT is highly effective, you can't just rock up and start training high interval intensity training. It, you, you just will fall short. Your body will not have been adapted. If you do start pushing the body too quickly, um, you'll probably get um, warning hormones released because the body is um, experiencing trauma. It's important to build up to it slowly. Um, also, you can't continually train HIT. Um, it's physiologically demanding upon the body um, and you need to recover. So, um, you know, you can't just continue to do that three or four times a week. Um, also, with HIT, you decrease the volume, increase the intensity, um, and that's why it's effective. However, you will get to certain barriers because you've run out of volume. So what one must do is to step outside of HIIT training and concentrate on some fitness building protocols um, like uh, VO2 and VVO2 uh, training to get fitter um, uh, through volume and intensity um, so that when we go back to HIIT, um, we are stronger and faster uh, and more efficient um, because that's how you 
you adapt, you place the body under different variant stimuli um, and the body must um, then adapt to that environment and that's how um, we progress. Um, the body doesn't know whether you are training on a watt bike or you're training on an exercise bike or you're training on a treadmill or you're uh, benching um, uh, or you're um, uh, doing chin-ups. It merely knows uh, or thinks that you're being hunted or you're hunting and that's how it responds. We are built to survive. Um, so when the body thinks it's not going to survive or it's not going to be able to hunt, um, it evolves and we progress and that's how we get fitter and stronger and more muscular and lose body fat. Um, if we're falling short on the stimuli that we're placing upon the body, that's when we don't move forward. Um, now, many of you will be aware of steady state and um, endless uh, training, which many people have been using for many years as their, as their way of oxidizing fat during a training session. However, I would say that this is a very um, ineffective or inefficient form of training. Um, although you burn a high number of your percentage calories from fat, um, you're training at such a low intensity that your total uh, calorie burn is low, um, so you have to have a high volume. Secondly, um, you're training at such low intensity, um, you're not placing any physiological demand upon the body, so it's not going to adapt or change. The ACSM, American College of Sports Medicine, clearly state that in order to get adaptive cardiovascular benefit from training, you must place the body at 50% um, or above of its VO2R. Okay, And then what happens is that you get an adaptive responsive benefit. The heart gets bigger, the lungs get stronger, um, you get more release of, of, of good hormones, um, and you get fitter. Um, and that's how you progress. So you have to place a decent amount of demand um, upon the body when you're training. Um, many people choose um, steady state in this because it's an easy um, way to, 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 to train. You're not really pushing the body. People, some people like that. Um, and they just roughly gauge that, that 60% of their maximum heart rate is, is steady state and off they trot. Um, there's an alternative to that, which is what we've done on the app, which I'm going to show you today, which is fat max training. Fat max sits under naturally under HIT, high intensity interval training. Um, so obviously, when you train intense, you obviously go into anaerobic. Um, so we're not trying to achieve that on this instance. So it, so fat max sits under that, but it sits above LIS and steady state. So you're getting the adaptive benefit. You're also getting the optimal rate of calorie burn per workout uh, with the optimal uh, level of fat being oxidized. So though you are percentagely burning less um, uh, of your calories from fat than less and steady, you're burning a total, a higher total number, and because the percentage is still high, you're actually um, expending more fat from the body. So um, that's why it's efficient, um, and it obviously offers you the cardiovascular benefit as well. Um, the reason that it isn't used um, extensively, maybe, is that it isn't easy to work the training zones out. Um, it, you can't offer a generic formula that suits and fits all. As an example, um, when you're a starter and starting out, you uh, obviously um, you hit uh, fatigue at an earlier percentage rate of your fitness engine capacity, okay? Um, typically between 45 and 55%, you will move from uh, fat oxidization um, into, into carbohydrate. Um, when the body starts gasping for, for breath, you're typically moving away from fat and moving to carbs. And when you're less fit, you do that at an earlier rate than someone who's highly fit. Um, someone who's fitter will be able to um, have a, a larger uh, aerobic capacity, so therefore they're burning more fat, which is our optimal uh, fuel source as humans, for longer, and, and they can burn up to 60 to 70 percent um, um, in, in, inside this uh, VO2 max before they switch into a um, an aerobic uh, capacity. Um, fat max isn't a static zone. It moves as you get fitter, and as your fitness tapers off, it goes backwards. 
So that's why it is conventionally not used um, because it can be a bit complicated. Our app um, has taken that problem away by a very complex um, coding system um, and a formula that takes into account many variables. Um, the user hasn't got to do anything, it just sets the zone for you based on up-to-date information. So let me give you an example. If we go into a fitness profile, which is to be mine, um, obviously um, I'm a, on, the, on the higher end of, of fitness. Um, we're going to the um, individuality screen. My resting heart rate is 43, body fat is five, uh, my maximum heart rate is 226, and I have a VO2 score of 64, okay? So I'm considered a fairly fit individual. We go into the app, I've um, taken off these sound effects, and we choose a training protocol. Um, in this instance, max cardio. We pick a workout, we go into the workout, okay? And now the app is uh, just getting uh, the individual motivated okay so we skip the warm-up now <clears throat> what you'll see in the very top figure is 178 that's the target so that's the target for this workout and that's the optimal um beats per minute um that i uh that are right for my body to burn the most amount of fat from this session um and to be still oxidizing fat before i switch to carbohydrates so i'm on the very edge of working uh myself uh, too hard, but I'm inside enough to be oxidizing fat. If we break this down, 178 beats per minute, um, that reflects 78% of my maximum heart rate, and that's at 65% of my total engine capacity, which is in line with um, uh, Professor Eugen Drops from Birmingham University, who discovered Fat Max. Um, if you look at always reading his papers, that's within the range of what he um, kind of. Um, demonstrates um, the fitter individuals would still be oxidizing fat, okay? So let's quit this workout, and now let's demonstrate the adaptive responsive element to this uh, software, um, my fitness profile. Uh, so now um, we're gonna become a starter. Um, resting heart rate of a starter would probably be at around 83 beats per minute. Body fat, uh, probably at about 24 percent maximum heart rate at about 173 beats per minute um, and the app can work out a vo2 score automatically and so this person obviously is less fit going to training protocols fat max cardio same workout and what the app does is it takes in the analytics and now you'll notice that the target heart rate is 110 beats per minute, okay? The energy selected is fat. Skip the warm up. And the app is just, um, normally if the music's on it, it starts to talk to you and motivate you. Um, yeah, just two seconds. And we will have a look at the um, stats of what that reflects. Okay, so 106, 100, uh, the target's 110, there's a, a, a range of um, margin of error, so you can't you can't work out at 110 beats per minute, there's a, an eight beats either way uh, margin, so you're still in the same zone, okay? Um, that reflects 67% of the person's um, maximum heart rate, and that reflects 46% of their engine capacity. So at 46% or thereabouts, um, just around at that mark, that individual will start at an earlier point experiencing fatigue and moving um, into, um, into an anaerobic um, uh, training zone. Now, what you have to realize here, if I was training uh, at 110 beats per minute, it would not um, tax me at all. I would burn minimal amount of calories. I'd have no adaptive benefit. And um, it, I would be falling short um, of my optimal fat max zone. If this individual was training at 170 beats per minute uh, in my zone, then that would be pushing them too hard, too much. It'd be pushing them into anaerobic. They wouldn't be oxidizing fat and they wouldn't be able to last a one cardio zone uh, training um, workout of you know 45 minutes at that pace. They would have to quit. 
and um, so that's why it's important to to elect the correct training zone. So um, we've made this very simple. Um, the, the individual wear a heart rate monitor. The data is is taken, and bang, it will work it automatically, and and it will vary your training zone depending uh, upon your performance and any data you input. And we hope that this. Um, is going to help many of you um, understand a bit more about training and when you train you are training more efficiently and more effectively.